Well, hello everybody. I've got a couple of good friends here today. I think a lot of you will be familiar with Ben Hunt, one of my genius partners at The Human Unleashed. And also, um, I think you will be familiar with Peace Ravenwood if you've come here through my Facebook groups because she's been quite active recently. And we thought, Ben and I, we thought we'd get Peace on to have a bit of a chat about this amazing rewilding project that she's, um, she's starting off, something that you can all be part of too. And there's amazing plans for it, all sorts of retreats, workshops, uh, just the possibility of staying there, um, learning all kinds of skills, seeing what's going on. But if you want to be part of a rewilding center, a sort of regenerative farming and all sorts, Listen through this interview because we're going to start off with a bit of Peace's story about how she came to this and, and, and then we're going to get into that and you'll find out exactly what to do and how to see um, how you can invest in that yourself and have all kinds of rewards and benefits. It's, uh, it's an exciting project. Now, I met Peace uh, actually in real life, which is very odd these days, isn't it? I, I met Peace around at a friend's house. And Peace was, Peace was actually quite a peaceful vegan at the time, but she did have the odd little snipe at me on, on, my, fa on my Facebook. And I thought that was quite funny. And Peace has had uh, a, a bit of a, um, a conversion to the dark side of carnivory uh, over the past year or two. I can't remember how long it was now. It's but, a year, just a year. Is it a year now? That's cool. So I, I wanted to maybe start off with uh, a little bit of Peace's story of how she came to this, how she um, stopped munching lentils and started munching steak. And, um, and it's, it's just been great to see um, all the health benefits that, that she's had too. But I think this has also been a bit of a, um, an inspiration to Peace to start this project. And, and Peace also has um, experience in projects like this before anyway, just uh, minus um, the goats and sheep. But <laughs> anyway, so peace welcome and lovely to have you here and ben's going to help me out um asking questions with peace because he's uh, more up on on this kind of thing than i am i just sit at home and munch steak and help people to get their joints working again so um yeah i've had to call in ben for this so hi peace and and so what happened you you were vegan and then it all went wrong yeah well prior to being vegan i was a smallholder um for a number of years with livestock um birth life and dispatching at the other end so i came from a omnivorous background like everybody else meat and two veg or whatever it's called and i did actually have a, a small holding in northern france with my former husband uh 20 years ago and we raised our own sheep um poultry you know uh, we were part of the hunting community over in France, so we always used to get the wild boar in season and all the other things. And I was there at the dispatching and the, the birthing, and we did everything ritualistically, actually. Um, very small farming community over in France, as you're probably well aware of. But then when I came back, um, quite a, a, a quite a very different person to, a, to the Viking that I am now. Just that's personal stuff. But um, in two thousand nine, we we went vegetarian and then vegan, <laughs> raw vegan, actually, uh, on a health journey because I was, I was morbidly obese for oh, a good 20 years beforehand, before coming to veganism. So I was like 20 stone at my heaviest. And so reading, reading into raw veganism through the Botenkos and, you know, that was my introduction to raw veganism through Vic Victoria Botenko, who's the hard, hardcore green smoothie uh, family. Um, I went headlong into that, had my own, you know, I went and trained as a raw chef uh, with a very, very famous raw chef coming out of the School of Living Light, the Lady Love. And then I had my own raw school. So I went into it headlong, you know, full on. And I did a lot of healing in the first few years. And then unfortunately, like we all know with veganism, it, the the high comes down crashing around you and um, the chronic autoimmune disease hit, which I'm still obviously, I'm only a year in now to healing. So I'm still working with all that uh, autoimmune stuff 
thank you to Phil for, and Jeremy for really helping out when I need you and I call help. Um, you know, so my background comes from livestock, then veganism and the whole health thing from that. So when I met you, I wasn't ready to hear the message, obviously. And I think it was about two years since meeting you. And then I realized that, Christ, if I don't do something, I'm going to be in a wheelchair or in hospital checking out. Uh, that's how bad it had got. And the denial is quite profound, actually, when you get that sick and you're still in denial from it all. So a year ago in May, I started weaning off the plants and um, now we're here a year down the line and I still don't really eat many plants. I'm really careful with what I eat and I mostly eat meat, but I don't eat a lot now. I just eat when I'm hungry and, and follow my body's wisdom, eat what she wants when she wants to. And I have my reishi coffee today. <laughs> plants as medicine coffee and mushrooms um so, so how, how has your journey changed from because I, I guess you know if you've always been into health and, and and natural healing um do plants have a different kind of level of meaning and value for for you at, at this yeah. point you know having moved on from seeing them as the only appropriate food source yeah very much so plants really are uh, there as medicine for the physical body, you know, like we all know about herbal teas, tinctures, that kind of thing. You know, everybody's kind of familiar with, with that, that level of medicinal plants. And then for me, as a medicine woman, they have a very spiritually, a very deep spiritual meaning. For me, I work with the plants daily in a, in a communication with them. It's like, when I'm, when I'm, say, with a cup of coffee, for example, you know, it's, it's our own coffee brand. You know, we've, we've just launched our own coffee. So it's specific beans from specific areas. They all carry a different meaning and a different vibration when they're blended together. And then I put medicinal mushrooms in there to fortify the body. And also you've got the mushroom um, communication system through the mycelium which cross communicates across all species so you know i have my business meetings in the forest that's where i've been all morning been in the forest with jeanette who is is one of the, the core uh guardians of this space that we're moving into um and we've been business meeting you know with oracle cars crystals bacon <laughs> and chocolate <laughs> sounds perfect so yeah, so you've, you're surrounded by the elementals in the, in the forest. There's a certain space that I go into with a 400 year oak we sit under who has got a lot of wisdom to partake. And it's a very ethereal experience in the forest. So that's my life, you know, as a rewilding practitioner, uh, you know, to reconnect the human into the natural landscape and become nature again, because most of us live uh, apart from nature and disconnected from the very heart blood of who we are. So to become nature again and still move about in a, a visceral body, you're kind of healing on such a profound level. You know, we all know how great we feel after a walk in the forest or out in the land somewhere. We just feel we're recharging. You know, that's the, that's the biohacking, isn't it? You know, recharging, earthing on the land heals on a cellular and a DNA level. Yeah, this, I mean, that's so much what, what we've been learning. I've been, you know, on a similar journey, I guess, a parallel path to you again over the last year or so since I met Phil. Phil is the, uh, is, is the great alchemist, it seems, in, in all of this. Um, but the, 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 it's like waves of something tribal something ancestral keep washing over me um and i think for so many people simply reconnecting with your ancestral diet is is an absolutely awesome place to start but then what tends to happen is it unlocks other other areas and mm. it's it is so natural for us you know and we've we've been working and we're working on this this new book with phil and i and, and three other guys um called the red pill revolution and and you know, the tribal reconnect is, is 
ancestral reconnection is so key to being the remedy for all these chronic problems that we have. And I'm talking, you know, physical, psychological, mental, emotional, spiritual, in the, in the Western world where we've just been plugged into this matrix, this system mm. that um, is not designed around our, our needs at all. It's just designed to create profit and funnel more profit, more power um, up into the hands of very few people. And uh, but what it's done is that we've we've been persuaded or tricked or coerced or forced somehow to hand over our natural ancestral self sufficiency and our this this feeling of of being a sovereign powerful human being that knows their place in the world that is intimately connected to this point in space and time in the universe um and that's just been taken away and it's been replaced by all this fake stuff mm -hmm. you know? so it might be fake food that you go actually that's not right or you know now we go to gyms instead of walking in the forest you know I, that, I, i've not been in a gym now for for a couple of years because you know my, my work mm -hmm. is isn't it you know i try and do physical work and i you know even things like going barefoot. I mean, I've been, since this whole lockdown stuff started, I've been 99% barefoot. Mm -hmm. I'll go out all day with the dogs. I'll go and fetch a stick to make a didgeridoo out of. And, you know, it's all barefoot the whole time. And the, the number of ways in which everything seems to point back to our, our tribal heritage is, is incredibly powerful. And I'm, I'm sure that everyone listening to this is, you know, can identify with if you, if you just think you know, just one example when people dream about retirement you know if, if, if I just slog my guts out for 50 years and if I can just scratch away enough money and pay off my house and stuff then that magical day of retirement comes and, and then what do you want to do and nobody's going to be sitting there thinking actually I want to be in the city you know in the middle of the city surrounded by people I don't know and you know going to a gym and this that and the other mm. everyone's going to be thinking I want to walk in the hills. I want to fish in the lake. I want to go off on a yacht, on an adventure. You know, I want to hang out on a beach with a hammock or, you know, all of these things. And it's all natural stuff. I, I want to spend my time in the garden. I want to yeah. I want to get a farm and get into permaculture. You know, all of it. And it's, it's all that stuff. And it's all, it's inside all of us, isn't it? Mm, that yearning to return home, as I call it. You know, the home, which is our ancestral birthright that um you know when I, I started learning with john seymour the grandfather of self-sufficiency you know and there is his i think his book is called fat of the land as well one of his his kind of biography and it was an amazing book that i rented out the library in the 90s and that kind of was a pivotal moment for me and that's when i first came back into this alignment with mother earth and the natural world um, you know, it set it off for me and I've been working steadily towards where we are today since, even though the path's gone kind of like that all the way um, and all the mistakes and, and misadventures along that path as well. So to, to even in, the, in its simplicity is having your own allotment. You know, if people can start there now. Well, don't wait for retirement, I say. You've got to be doing these natural things now so that you're not too old and knackered by the time they let you retire, which is the pushing the boundary with that all the time. You know, 70 now, isn't it? I mean, Jesus, what? Yeah, I know. And how, how many people just die so soon after retirement because they've just got nothing to do? I, that that yeah. drives me crazy, the thought of that. I, yeah. I retired at about 16, but um, I, yeah. I can't imagine just working and working and waiting for your retirement. You've got no. to take little holidays so something we often go on about in Thu you have to take your little holidays every day every week every you know like a night's carp fishing for me a week or something like that you have to be out in, in nature and take these little breaks so peace sketch out this project for us what's going on where are you up to and how can people get involved in it yeah what's what's in it for them that's that's the exciting thing and it keeps growing what's in it for them um well this this isn't a new thing for me you know um aunt and i have been together 16 years now and you know the force that's driving me forwards is all my ancestors that's i'm never alone because i'm surrounded by the ancestors all the time um and they're, they're just powering 
me forwards on this journey. It's been over a decade's worth of actioning steps every day. Um, it, it was going to be a, a vegan retreat center at one point, <laughs> but still land-based, still for rewilding. And it's always been about nature. Uh, it was just going to be all about the, the, the plants um, and the bees, because bees, bees are something that's always so vital to work with the bee energy and, and the hive. I mean, look at the hive, you know, you can model society on so much better by working with the hive, the creativeness of the hive. And, um, you know, when, when I actually came to this, this awakening back into the ancestry, fully primal ancestry, we just flipped this whole project on its head. And it's now all about regenerative farming, but very, very low, low impact small scale looking back to pre-viking uh where they weren't farmers you know they weren't growing the grains it's it's when they were hunter gatherers so how we can replicate on a croft in the highlands of scotland uh because that's the location that we've chosen for very many very obvious reasons up in the highlands of scotland you are just literally surrounded by the elements of nature you know, you've got the mountains, you've got the locks, you've got the forest, you've got the wildlife. You can go and see your stag, you know, that's going to be shot for you. That's the depth of where we're going with the highlands. Um, to really where we are at with it now is because I've, I've done my I've done a lot of um, training over the years. I've immersed in the indigenous medicine, people's culture, uh, the rewilding of the self. The land doesn't need rewilding as long as we're mindful, the land will rewild itself. But we have to be custodians of that because man has just stripped it back. Even in the highlands, you know, they've, they've created almost a desert in the highlands because of the grouse shooting and stag hunting that has been done uh, let's put it this way, not very nicely. It's all about the money again. It's how much money can we gain off that land by fulfilling people's murderous tendencies. You know, these people that go out hunting grouse and, you know, shooting willy nilly and all that. They're kind of, to me, they're, they're like serial killers that are being controlled by getting their tits, you know, getting their rocks off, going and shooting something and paying big bucks for doing that. And so unfortunately that's been corrupted as well. So by us coming in to rewild the soul self, the human, we become custodians of that land in a far different way. And to me, it's all about that mindful connection, that deep, deep immersion in what that land has to offer us and what we can offer back tenfold to that space. So it's, it's becoming an indigenous tribal culture again of we feed back into that landscape more than we remove from it. So reforesting is really key to this project, as is meeting your food on all those levels, whether it be plant based, animal based or spiritual based. Um, so the, the idea is to start to put together a, a center on a significant area of land in Scottish Highlands near Loch Ness yeah where people can visit and um yeah fingers fingers crossed it, it's not 100% decided yet but but where where people can visit and actually just immerse themselves in that experience of being connected with nature you know which is so different to the idea of oh we're gonna have two weeks vacation we're gonna get on a jet plane and fly to Jamaica and swing in a hammock for a couple of yeah. weeks and just as you're starting to feel you know the benefit of, of that reconnection you're getting ready to fly home and stuff like that but you know I think that the to, to be able to to experience that through for example living uh, or sleeping very close to the ground so you you intimately connected with the magnetic field of the earth um, you're getting the electrons from the earth from being grounded the whole time um, maybe getting up with the sunrise and watching the sunset and staring into the fire in the evening and eating, you know, freshly sourced, local, seasonal meat and 
whatever whatever else is is attainable at the time i mean you know there, there's there's a huge part of me that that although i'm progressively you know reintroducing those elements into my life i simply don't know what it would feel like to come to you know the end of seven nights sleeping on the earth you know for me it's like one night two nights camping mm-hmm. and you know you've got a bad back because you've had to put your tent away and then drive three hours to get home and you know th- this isn't like that this uh, mm-hmm. i mean i i can imagine but i can't i know that i can't really feel what that experience would be like yeah. to go for a week or even two weeks of being so plugged in to mother earth yeah. so cool. raw as well you know it really opens you up when you when you unplug from the technical fast-paced consumerist lifestyle that the majority of us choose to live and then you plug back in you know to earth by literally just getting as much of your humanness onto that earth as possible and like you say waking and sleeping with our natural body rhythm uh, I mean up in the highlands it's like dark for two hours and it's not even proper dark at this time of year for two hours <laughs> And uh, and then in, you know, and then I in remember, winter, I remember wandering off up into the hills and um, getting completely lost and getting stuck at a um, a little tarn, you know, a little little lock up in the hills, and I didn't know my way back. And I was fishing yeah. like the evening rise, fishing, fly fishing, catching some trout. And I thought, well, it doesn't matter. It's going to be light in a couple of hours. I'll just stay and fish the morning rise as well. And I did, and then wandered back. Yeah, you know? But I couldn't yeah. have found my way back in the dark. But it was just. I'll just sit here anyway and chill out for the whole night, which was only a couple of hours. It's amazing. Yeah, it's quite phenomenal, that, isn't it? When you when you think you're near the more near the Arctic Circle up in the Highlands, uh, how different that life is to any other lifestyle that we can imagine that we are living on a on a often not by choice because we're forced to live that. Um, you know, so so you know, looking back to timeline, and this is ten years in the making. And the only reason that we haven't done it so far is because we haven't been on the right page. You know, the team hasn't been there. We've always had, you know, things that just haven't fit with people. And now we're a really tight knit, tight knit core tribal team who are massively skilled. You know, we've all got our amazing skill sets that we've amassed over the decades. Um, I always say we carry our medicine in a massive bag and we're literally dragging it with us now. It's that full of with all our skills and knowledge to share with other people. Um, and they can have a good rummage in that bag and find out what fits with them. That's how the way, the way we work. What's a fit for you right now where you're too. Um, so it's actually a very flexible kind of space that, that you, you're creating here. So yeah, there will I've, be this kind of paleo immersion or ancestral reconnection, immersion yeah. experiences that, that people can go what, individually as couples or families can can yeah. up and reconnect that way yeah absolutely there can be it can be quite structured if that's what a person needs we can really structure and tailor it um and i like the fact that we can you know we're not a prescriptive you know nothing's prescriptive when it comes from nature you know we're trying to reflect how nature flows and this is why reforesting is really key because you look at a forest and then you can reflect that back onto the human self. How can we reforest ourselves and our communities? And a forest is our natural home. You know, we, are, we all come from forest dwellers because that was the most supportive environment for ourselves. And the most, of, most of the country, you know, we're here in the UK, but I can pretty much see it being everywhere, was forested and, you know, everybody, relied on the forest to support them you know you've got the charter of the forest where that is for the common people and the royalty gave us access to the forest because it, they knew that we had that right to go and uh meet our basic needs from what the forest provides so that's where we're mm-hmm. to with the reforesting yeah. it's and so when, intrinsically when, when nature is allowed to to flourish naturally we are surrounded yeah. with so much abundance i mean wood alone is yeah. just the most magnificent material i mean i don't mm. know because i'm making play didgeridoos but you know it's it's um carbon neutral fuel 
and you can make your homes out of it. You can make all kinds of tools out of it. It's absolutely <laughs> wonderful stuff. And absolutely. I think, you know, the, like you said quite correctly, the, uh, you know, it's the grouse moors that the people just went and flattened these, these forests in order to make mm. room for, for grouse. And that really is only, it's a couple of hundred years old, that, that, that um, disaster. And it was done so that the, if, if you imagine, before all this technology that we've got now, if you were super rich, um, there are very few ways that you could express your wealth and show it off and stuff like that. And gambling and horse racing were rife, alcoholism. And, and the other thing that you could do was um, go and shoot the hell out of some uh, unsuspecting animals, you know? And mm. when shotguns were invented, people just started going off and, you know, shooting these fast flying grouse and pheasant and, and whatever. And so that's how it all started. It's all to serve the, 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 the super rich. And then that has then become part of our inherited culture that now, you know, people want to go and do that in order to express how important they are. But yeah. it's, it's completely unnatural, like you say, and this, you know, this, these islands should be forested from north to south. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Please, um, yeah. what, what, so if people are watching this and they're thinking, this sounds fascinating, sketch out what the sort of area is going to look like. What's going to be there? Where, where could they come and stay? And, and what, what is the kind of uh, uh, contribution they can make now? where yeah. they, can, uh, they, they can get a part of this, because you've got all sorts of interesting plans for that, of giving people access to it, whether it's individual people or people who want to go there and hold workshops and uh, yeah. retreats and whatever. So mm. talk us through what it's actually going to look like. Okay, so just to sort of paint a nice pretty picture, uh, if I can describe when you when this is the vision you know I'm, i am a great manifesting visionary you know i'm pretty good at it and um you know despite the fact that i'm skin i've got such wealth <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm very wealthy really um the vision is when you arrive you're just met by the most stunning environment surrounding you that you could ever imagine it's dark skies there's very little interference with technology. You know, you've got the barest minimum access to the grid, as it were. And that's, that gives you an immediate unplug because you're not going to be able to check your phone all the time because <laughs> you won't be able to get online. Um, but what we're, quite, what we're creating is a, a, a food forest that we live in. So there's going to be a lot of tree and understory planting. And then as that establishes and matures, you won't actually see where you're going to be living because the trees will hide your abodes as it will. But we are going to put up yurts. So they'll eat, they will be sort of pods that you're going to be able to live in and you'll have your own solar, solar shower or wood fired shower area, fire pit, so you can sit out and cook and sit around the fire in your own little bit, all nice secluded. You'll have um, compost toilets and there'll be an epic field kitchen area for people to go and cook whatever it is that they desire to cook. You know, it'll be a full on proper field, rustic field kitchen outside, but there'll be cover as well. We're in the Highlands. We do need some form of weather protection. Um, and in the wood burn, in the in the yurts, there'll be wood burners, super comfy beds, you know, skins, fleeces, lots of blankets. You know, it will be very luxurious, but very close to the earth. You know, and you'll be able to walk around barefoot because we'll ensure that it's safe to do so. Um, there will be obviously you're going to be surrounded by wildlife, and you'll be able to view that all the all the time you know you're just going to be able to sit and just be amazed at what you can see you know there's there's deer there's hares there's rabbits there's like 42 species of birds that you can just see on a daily basis in suburbia you might see four or five you know and the, you know i've noticed this year that there's very few bird species in suburbia now because it's getting so polluted and toxic that they're just not making it they're dying off. What, what other kinds of events can you uh, can you visualise happening in this space? Okay, so primarily because we're registering as a not-for-profit, 
a community a retreat place. I don't want to call it a centre. It doesn't feel right, that word. It's just a rewilding retreat. But we're doing this as a, as a, a not-for-profit to make it a different dynamic, taking it out of the old way of, of commerce again, um, putting back in more than we take out. Um, we wanted, you know, the vision that was given to me working with the land was to provide respite space for people uh, who are, they can, they can need this respite space for whatever reason. You know, one of our members is on the ambulance service and the, the chronic ill health that those, that the NHS suffer with, as you know, over the years it impacts their mental health, their physical health, everything. She knows the vitality of, of accessing somewhere like this at a moment's notice. And we want to be their first aid. We want to be at them to be able to call us up and say, we need to come now. And we'll go, yeah, come. So that will be the, 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 the giving back, you know, to those people that really need it. You know, living with a chronic illness myself, I've not had much money. I've not been able to just take off when I've needed to go and plug back in and stay on the earth because I've just not been able to afford it. So I want to make this accessible to people that may not have much money. Um, and as a not-for-profit, we can do that. And then we have the different, different ways to, to, to come and stay. You can come and you can book like you would book a regular break and you pay X amount for that and you'd get whatever package you wanted. Uh, you can bring a group on a retreat. Um, because of the way we are, we are a primal ancestral retreat space as opposed to what is prevalent now, plant-based vegan retreats. Everybody feeds you plants when you go on retreat now. Um, we're not. We're, we're offering. Yeah. 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 They can go and do that there. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're not. We're, we're the opposite. You know, yes, we can give you plants, but we are a primal retreat. And that is the heart of what we are. So it's appeal. You know, I want to appeal to those people that are looking for that, where they can come, know that they're going to get their steaks and their whatever they want, their wild caught, freshly shot venison, you know, wild caught trout and salmon and all that kind of thing. Um, you know, we probably will be able to network. And if people want to go and shoot their own up in Scotland, it's much more accessible to do that. Shame we can't do it with a bow because it's illegal, isn't it? Over here at the moment. Um, so there's all that to sort of offer people. And there is retreat space for groups of up to 15 people, you know, so if somebody is a teacher or wants to bring a group for a specific reason, then they can book that space for X amount of days and have the entire holding the off grid, the outside of the holding for them exclusively to bring their people. You know, they can bring their chef everything they need you know and we will get the space ready for them you know we'll put up the bell tents and it's going to be a, a glamping field you know or they can bring their own you know little tents and stuff whatever whatever it wants to look like for them we will make that happen for them you know because again we don't want to be we don't want to be the corporate place where this is what you can do and use no leeway so yeah? it's actually a space that the, the community can say, okay, you know, whatever event you want to host or whatever course you want to run or whatever experience you want to give a group of people, then, you know, you, anyone can, can take the lead in, in that sense. And, and what you're doing is you're, you're going to maintain and manage this, this magical area for the benefit of the extended tribe. I love that idea. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful picture you painted of it there. What, um, what can people do now who want to get involved individually? You've got uh, a, like a crowdfunding thing going on and you've got um, all sorts of plans for giving people um, uh, prizes and benefits and, and like little vouchers and whatever. Tell us about that and where people can go to find all about it and hmm. contribute and become part of it. Yeah, you can become pledgers. 
uh, we're using crowdfunder.co.uk um, because that seems to be the best one to use for uh, moving projects like ours forwards. And so you can be part of our tribe by pledging and then we give you whatever you choose in return from the pledges. Uh, that can be accessed on our website, which is rewilding or rewildingretreat.org. Um, I guess that will be written into the description of the thing below, your technical things. Um, and the crowdfunder can be accessed through the website. Uh, that's one way. And we've got a heck of a lot on there that people can choose. And there's more to be added to it as well. Uh, another way that we're developing uh, are becoming it's more it's more kind of like separate from the crowdfunder but it gives you it's it's not about ownership you know this thing isn't going to be owned by anybody we are custodians of this space and it will be protected from misuse for the generations to follow once we kick our clogs and return to wherever we came from um you become founding founding members as it were by supporting what we're doing now over the years to come but it's it's not something you're not just giving us something the way i see it and, and we've come with this as a founding member you're kind of paying into a pension pot for yourself as it were so we're working it out at the minute where you can either uh, pay a lump sum and you get x for that so like Ben, you came up with this amazing idea of like a timeshare thing. So if you invest X amount of money, that will give you access, exclusive access to our site for two weeks a year. And you can come and you can have the best time for two weeks a year, whether that's one week there and one week there or two whole weeks, depending on what your life's like. So, you know, that, that is something phenomenal that you are going to pay in for your own benefit. Okay. And then from that sort of like big thing, we're filtering down for more to suit everybody's needs, really, and everybody's um, abilities to invest in themselves on the pay it forwards scale. So not only are you paying it forwards to help us attain this space and, and get it up and running in a short space of time, you're paying it forward for yourself, knowing that your monthly subscription or your yearly fee is then paid for you to come and stay and um, that will be tiered so like it'll be an entry level quite a small amount a month or a year um, up to a bigger amount a month or a year and that we are grading at the minute is so you get that for that amount and then that for that amount and then that for that amount you know so from bring your own tent and do your own thing to we'll lay on everything for you mm. you know so you've got something to to suit everybody, you know, any individual's kind of needs and, and budget. And this is, I guess it's also open to people who, who aren't based in the UK or Ireland who, you know, because in fact, you're not that far from Norway even, are you? People can jump, jump across pretty easily. I, Absolutely. I, I can imagine people coming from Europe or even the US to, you know, to do this. And, you know, so many people in the US have also have um, Anglo-Saxon heritage and genetically, you know, they've got roots back in the UK or Ireland as well. Now, I think some, something that's, that's really fascinating for me is to, so I've spent my whole life trying to, you know, rediscover what it means to be an authentic human. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've, you know, as an Englishman, I've always kind of envied these other cultures who have a, still have a kind of indigenous history that's, that's tangible, which is probably what drew me to Australian Aborigines. But, you know, people are very much into the Vikings that, that you've mentioned, and there's, there's a bit of that in, in many of us, um, or Native Americans, you know, South American um, indigenous tribes. And there, there is a big hole in the soul, I think, of the, of the, uh, the British, certainly the English um, soul. Mm -hmm. you know, like, where, where has our heritage gone? You know? Yeah. And how That's can we rediscover that in, a, in an authentic way? Well, this is it. And this is for me, it's part of the whole rewilding journey as well, because what happens when you unplug from the third dimensional world that we all live in and plug back into your authenticity and connecting with the, the earth around you, you start to feel 
so much different and you're reconnecting with your ancestral lineage also whatever that looks like for you um you find your truth in a way of of who you really are and how using what you learn to take it back into your world your um, modern world and re rewilding the self is all about right okay we're going to rewild ourselves bring nature back into us and then bring nature back into the concrete world um and we do a lot of stuff with the rewilding you know you learn to become a shapeshifter and literally disappear like that nobody can see you if you choose you ain't seen you ain't seen me um and then you can do that back in the concrete jungle as well that's Much like the old, the old um, invisibility sutra in patanjali's yoga sutras one of the cities yeah, yeah. listen yeah. Well, this just sounds great it just ties in with all the stuff we're doing at, at the human unleashed and i'm sure we'll be holding retreats there and stuff and we'll be we'll we'll be definitely a part of this and i we we must get you back on at some point on the human unleashed to talk about all sorts of things like this but today i reckon let's leave it at that because we've got we've got the details out about what's going on here and and people know exactly how to get in touch with you now and we'll put everything in the show notes anyway mm. and i'll put this up on my youtube channel and bung it around the groups and whatever and um there great thank you so much peace Was, is there anything else that we've missed before we go that you wanted to slide in there that we've um we, we haven't covered that you need to say to people we'll we'll, we'll get I you think back on for more in-depth yeah. subjects i think at some point oh it could go on couldn't it my god this is yeah. saga um the rewilding unleashed <laughs> Um, I think, I think because I'm so passionate about opening this space for people, you know, we, we consider ourselves to be the guardians of the space yet we, you know, as a guardian, it's all about opening up that space because we recognize how crucial for our own well being it is to reconnect and have a safe space to, to know that safe space is there for you. I don't particularly think that that's done yet. And this is where I think is, if you want to be technical, call it our USP, is that we, you know, an open door policy has always been very, very crucial for me to provide for people. Um, so and recognizing how much this is needed now, not in two, three, four years time, 10 years time, it is in, it's about the now. You know, and I think what's, what current situation is, is showing us is how, in, how important the now is. Okay, so we have a timeline to work to. So it's kind of like great to have this opportunity to bring a shout out, a call to action to assist in us opening this space for those in need for now and the years to come. So our timeline, we would like to be open by January on a very basic level for people to come and just be and be part of the the initial observational process you know and then by spring next year we want to be opening up in detail to having those retreats begin by by spring next year um, so it's quite a short period of time it's kind of a big epic thing to do so that's my call to action today as of as viking <laughs> it really is exciting and i think i think that you know if we can manage to communicate the the idea that if you forget about paying for gym memberships and forget about paying for you know weight watchers and slimming world and all this all this nonsense and all the supplements and all the all that that crap that, that we that we just shell out for unthinkingly you know constantly and in, instead of that, let's let's take a bit of a bit of our spare money and and invest in somewhere where we can just really, really recharge. But what's it's so exciting is that, like you explained, mm. that it's rewilding. It's not just about the experience there; it's what you bring back with you, and how you can explore and use that time with other people who are on similar parallel journeys to mm. to explore how we can reconnect and rewild ourselves in our daily lives 
Yeah. Once, once you've gone and experienced something like that, it, it, it changes you and it, it will it will mm. inspire people to have a little bit of that in their everyday lives. For me, exactly. it was it was back in the old free festival days, you know, before they became massive, great monsters, corporate monsters like Glastonbury, which is just kind of Babylon. I mean, I think last time I went there was 99 and all I did was stay in the teepee field. I had a teepee at the time. And that was great. I didn't, I didn't really stray outside that because it was almost like the old festivals where you were allowed fires. Mm. You'd go and hang out with people next to you. You'd know all the people on the, on the, on the convoy. It was kind of a, a, a tribe in itself. And to bring yeah. back that awareness, that sort of local awareness of eating mm. locally and actually, um, actually knowing people as well who live next door to you, that, as you know people over the other side of the world just because they're on your Facebook group, you know? And I think... Yeah. At the, everybody trying to get to this whole globalism and this ridiculous business that's happening at the moment this is so important well, so this is it. you know I and mean, it's also you know you can come along and you can literally skin an animal this is where this is the depth that we are actually going we will have backyard butchery uh days where you can come and literally process an entire animal that's been killed as it needs to be killed and and done whatever we need to do and take every single goddamn piece of the animal. The hide can be turned into something, whether that's a drum or a piece of clothing or whatever. You can make your own bow and boat and string it with the, you know, with parts of the animal as it was done. You can make all kinds of things, you know, shamanic objects. I wear bone in my hair, for example, you know, um, to as adornments as the tribal cultures wear. We're actually going to have a Viking camp with the full-on viking reenactment skills where you can learn how to weave and you can learn how to tan a hide turn a fleece into your bedding and everything is going to be there alongside the bushcraft area so you'll be able to light your fires and go out and forage the wood and go out and do this that and the other and um, because we've got a bush bushcraft expert as one of the team members is going to come and teach the bushcrafting courses uh, using everything from the environment that we're immersed in so you know to to full-on luxury <laughs> you know <laughs> it's like, so there's, there's no bounds to what we can offer you in an off-grid natural based setting with well, no real modern a, things made that's a brilliant note to end on i think and peace thank you so much i'm really excited by this this has given me a, a clearer vision of what it's going to be like even though i've read up on it and seen sort of your your little uh, messages and whatever yeah. so thanks so much for coming on i hope this gets uh this gets out to people and they they uh they jump on board in some way it's growing daily it's so exciting to see the support that we're having in just over a week's week since we launched the website and everything fantastic well thank, thank you, you so much peace and thank you ben for thanks, helping so. me out here it's really yeah, see you soon see you soon yeah.